Whoa, whoa, what is going on, internet? I want to talk to you about my hair loss. Hair, hair loss, loss, hair loss, loss hair, hair loss. loss. Give you guys some updates as to what's going on with my chrome dome, uh, which is not chrome, uh, but it's just a dome. Uh, furry dome, furry dome, let's call it that. I'm Eric Van Holst, founder of Beard Brand, and today, yes, let's talk about my hair. Okay, so uh, long time viewers know that I've uh, created plenty of videos uh, during my, my hair loss or becoming older and getting aged up. And uh, I've had a few people recently reach out to me asking for updates on what's going on, what I'm doing, what my perspective is, and maybe share some advice on what's going on for uh, you guys. So uh, really like uh, if you guys have followed the journey a long time, you know that when I grew my hair out, I really started to notice my crown was getting a lot thinner. Now my crown is thinner than where it was when I was in high school or when I was uh, a child, uh, as well as slight uh, receding of my, uh, my hairline up here. Let me tell you guys, I recognize that the hair that I got is nowhere near uh, what a lot of guys struggle with and deal with uh, as rapid hair loss. That being said, I like to make these videos because your hair loss journey is not anyone else's journey. Like what you go through and the emotions you have to struggle with um, are very much real. Now, it's important to take a step back and sometimes appreciate what we have and not worry about uh, what's going on or how things are getting worse. And uh, that's why I want to make this video because I know a lot of guys out there have uh, as a kid, they grew up with really long, full, thick hair, and they start to experience thinning or hair loss as they age, and it's not fun. It's, it's not something that anyone really likes to deal with, whether or not there's people who have stuff that's worse or better. You know, like, your feelings and your emotions about your situation are real and true. And I'll tell you, me personally, that having... <laughs> Even as a guy who's six foot five and no one can friggin' see the crown of my head, uh, it's not it's not something I want. You know, like as real it is, is I want full thick. I want my crown of my head to be as thick as the front of my head, to be as thick as the side, to be as thick as the back. Especially as a guy who's a YouTuber who makes money through providing grooming advice and style advice on how to maintain your hair. It sucks to have to deal with thinning crown uh, when guys like Greg Brzezinski have beautiful lush hair into his 50s, Carlos Costa, again, like beautiful lush head of hair. My hair, those are the guys I'm comparing to. Whereas, you know, some of the guys who are thinning, they look at me and they're like, quit complaining. You have no right to complain. You got a great head of hair. And I agree. I am happy with the hair that I have. And I want to talk a little bit more about that. When you create videos for YouTube, like everyone talks about everything about you. You have to learn to develop a thick skin. And I have, I would say I've got a pretty thick skin. Uh, people, of course, always comment on my voice. They comment on, uh, you know, my beard, uh, of course. They comment on my style, my dress, anything they, they comment on. But when I, when I would do videos where I'd kind of go down like this, I, I would have people comment on my scalp. And as a person, you don't ever really see your scalp. So... When those comments came in about how you can see through to my scalp on my head, like that really, really got to me. And when I grew my hair long, the longer your hair is, the, the more it's going to show the thinness in your crown. And that really, really got to me. It really bothered me. So what I started doing was I looked into solutions for tackling hair loss. And basically you've got, uh, I think you got like three options. Uh, your first option is going to be uh, minoxidil, which is going to be a topical uh, thing that you put on your head. It's going to be uh, Rogaine is a brand name that a lot of people are familiar with. And then you're going to have um, hormone adjusting ones, which are going to be um, finasteride uh, or deuteride, deuteride, durasteride. Give a dyslexic a word with more than like one syllable and you are just in for a tough time. But um, those two 
hormonal pills you can take. And then uh, the triple play is going to be, uh, again, another word, multiple syllables that I'm going to actually butcher the word is like, um, I'm going to call it like let me Google it. Woo! I was way off, way off. It is uh, called ketoconazole is the ingredient that you want in your shampoo. Uh, and that's going to help uh, tackle kind of like the DHT effects that your scalp is battling. The word that I was thinking of is uh, the specific type of shampoo, which is called Nizerol. So if you add Nizerol shampoo in with your finasteride and your um, Rogaine, then that's going to be kind of like your triple play for slowing down hair loss or maybe potentially regrowing a little bit of the hair that you've lost. I went on uh, the Rogaine for a period of time because that's the least uh, evasive getting all the myths out of there, Rogaine or Minoxidil, uh, it does have side effects that could kind of affect your cardiovascular, essentially how I understand it to work. And the science still doesn't totally understand it, but my interpretation of what they think is working is the increase of blood flow to your scalp allows for a healthier hair. It's going to have a stronger root and that's going to what be what helps you lose less hair or keep the hair that you have. And then, uh, the finasteride is going to go in, it's a hormone, so it's going to go in and affect your hormones, which means it's going to lower your DHT, which is going to help uh, fight against the DHT, which is the thing, uh, higher levels of DHT will cause you to lose uh, head hair, but also potentially affect your ability to grow beards. Uh, the downsides and the side effects of something like a hormone effect is going to be uh, really tied around with your prostate. Uh, some guys have experienced, uh, you know, weaker ejaculations or sexual side effects or, you know, hormonal type of things. So my recommendation, if you're getting into hair loss, is to start with the most minimally evasive, see how it works, and then add on more. So the shampoo and the Rogaine, start with that. And then if you still want to fight it, then go ahead and add the finasteride. So for me, again, I started off with Minoxidil and then a company came out, uh, HEMS. I went on their plan and gave that a ch shot, uh, getting the, um, the whole finasteride, all that stuff. I went on the, the pills and the side effects, you know, it kind of goes into, uh, it's, it's, you know, like it's, I'm a big fan of science and anecdotal evidence is, aren't really indicative of what's going on. And then you have kind of like this placebo effect, like am I experiencing, you know, like less effective ejaculations than I did in the past? I mean, I'm not like measuring 10 cups and I'm not like putting tape measure to see how far things are going. Like there's no science behind it. So it's all kind of like what you're experiencing. And then you kind of get in your head of, is this working or not? So. I, don't, I didn't really experience any kind of significant type of side effects that I would say are outside the norm of any other type of things in my life. Um, but at the same time, uh, during this time period, one other additional thing came out that really shifted uh, my perspective of what's going on. So what happened is I got a, I got a free testing kit to 23andMe. I did the little spit in the cup, sent it on my way and got my report back. Well, a few months after doing that, they update it and they say, well, there's a genetic component to hair loss. We've kind of sequenced that in the DNA. And then based on the results, we, we have kind of an estimate that you're not very likely to be experiencing hair loss. Now, I'm a dude who's 38 years old. I still got pretty good head of hair. It's thinner than where it was in the past. So it's kind of at that point that I realized that, yes, I have crowning of my thin, but I wouldn't really describe it as male pattern baldness. Um, maybe this is something where it's just, as I get older, it gets thinner and thinner and thinner, uh, unfortunately, but it's not gonna be one of those things that, you know, I have that rapid decline between um, 38 and 48 or, or whatever the time period is. So I do expect it to continue to get thinner but I've kind of come to terms with who I am as an individual and recognize that, you know, my hair loss journey is my hair loss journey. I'm going to accept it. Now, there's a little bit of also 
good news in what I've been doing a little bit differently over the years. Uh, about two years ago, I got back into rowing. Rowing, of course, is a sport on the water, a uh, really intensive sport, one of the hardest sports out there, and it's an outdoor sport. And what I think happened here is between uh, the increased blood flow in my body where my heart rate's getting up to 185, 190 beats per minute, and I'm doing this, uh, I'm not holding an hour for an hour, but I'm doing like hour workouts or hour and a half workouts, and I'm doing it in the sun with the vitamin D coming in, I feel like there was a little bit of, of not just like health for my body, getting my heart in shape, but I feel like that, that blood was essentially doing what the Rogaine was doing. And I feel like, and again, this is not based on data, but I feel like my hair loss has either completely slowed down or, or completely stopped, or maybe it has gotten a little bit fuller and thicker. I still have it, I can feel it, it's still a little bit thinner here, but I feel like there's a little bit of maybe a calyx here, and it's not so see-through as it, as it was in the past. So I've given up uh, on all the finasteride, I've given up on the minoxidil, I've given up uh, on the shampoos, I'm not doing any of that, I'm just living my life. And then my plan is if it continues to get thinner uh, to the point where like it's clearly a bald patch on my crown, then I think the best option for me personally is to do a hair transplant. And a hair transplant is where they take follicles out of hair areas where it's fuller and thicker and they relocate it to the crown. So me personally, I don't mind higher temples. I think that's fine. Like as it goes back, I think that's just part of becoming a more mature uh, man. Uh, but the one on the crowd, I feel like the crown is like, you know, why, like, as long as all the hair connects, I'm cool with it. But if there's like patches or gaps in it, I feel like me personally, uh, I don't like it. Whereas I know some guys, they prefer to have the temples here because most people see this, but uh, they don't mind if they lose it up here because not a lot of people really see the, the crown of your head. So there you go. My hair loss journey. Uh, I guess uh, one of the things that I want to say to kind of comfort you guys out there is like, you either experience some kind of hair loss or you die young. Now, I know there's guys who lived into their 80s and they had a full thick of hair and that's true. And if you look at my dad, he's got a full thick of hair. Uh, but I know like the hair he had when he was in his 30s is different than the hair he has now. It's definitely thinner, but it's still all the way there. And I think that's really going to be terms that you have to come together with and, and I had to come together with is you're just going to experience thinning hair. It's part of growing old. It's, it's not even something that's exclusive to men. Uh, it's, women also experience thinner hair as they age. So it's one of the um, side effects of getting old and we all want to get old. So the quicker we can learn to embrace that or take action and take control over the, the process, the happier we're going to be. As always, thanks for watching. Cheers. Keep on growing.